Hello, we're back in general chemistry two, and we're talking about electrochemistry. We're continuing our discussion about voltaic cells and batteries, also known as galvanic cells. Today we're gonna do uh, calculations and some construction of a voltaic cell. So what the battery actually looks like in terms of what you would build in the lab. Um, we have two reactions here. We have um, the reaction of, really they're half reactions as we all know. We have lithium and we have tin too. Um, both of these are written as reductions because when we talk about the cell potential, the standard cell potential is in terms of the reduction, right? So that is, it's called a standard reduction potential for a reason. So when we look at each of these, we need to decide which one of these is gonna be the anode and which is going to be the cathode. And the way we decide that is the more positive number, remember E naught, so the cell potential, we want to be a positive number. So we want it to be uh, greater than zero. And the reason why is because then it would be spontaneous, right? If E is greater than zero, then we have a spontaneous reaction, which means that it would be spontaneous as it's written. As you look at these two, you're gonna compare the two and pick the more positive number. The more positive number is spontaneous as written, which means that indeed you would have that as the cathode. Why is that the cathode? Well, if you remember for a moment, folks, the cathode is where reduction occurs. And if that's where reduction occurs, then we would want the spontaneous reduction to happen there, right? So that means that the other one has to be the oxidation, which means we would need to flip that reaction and it is therefore the anode. And let's put, since I did that for anode, let's put reduction here and cathode and then get out of the way so that you can see that. Okay, so those are my two reactions. I've now labeled which one is which. We could do some calculations with that, right? We could go over here and we could already, just by labeling this, calculate the E naught cell. The E naught cell is equal to E naught cathode minus E naught anode. Now that I've labeled these two, I could do that almost immediately. It'd be negative point 136 volts minus a negative 3.05 volts, which let me give that a moment uh, and plug that into my calculator. And I get 2.91. I actually got 2.914, but since this has two digits to the right of the decimal point, I'm going to put 2.9 one volts, which is a positive number, which means that it's a spontaneous reaction, which is exactly what a voltaic cell is showing. It needs to be as spontaneous as is. We could also actually calculate quite a lot from this as well. So let's go ahead and do our calculations. We know that delta G naught is equal to negative NF E naught cell, right? Where N is the number of uh, moles of electrons transferred. Now what's interesting here, okay, so N is the number of moles of electrons transferred. F is Faraday's constant, that's just a constant, right? Okay, so that's 96,500 joules per volt mole electron, and N is the number of moles transferred. What's really interesting here is that these two electrons, the numbers, the coefficients in front of these two electrons could be thought of as moles, but these need to be the same number. We know from balancing half reactions, they have to be the same number. So you're basically looking for the least common denominator of those two. Between one and two, it has to be two. So we're essentially going to multiply this whole reaction by two in order to balance them, and we would actually flip it as well. So that's going to equal two moles of electrons transferred and then we have the other part let's plug this in using the 
same marker I used for the above calculation. Two moles of electrons times 96,500 joules per volt mole electron times 2.91 volts. And notice that there's a negative in front of this. This is perfect because while we want E, the cell potential, to be greater than zero, we want delta G, gives free energy, to be less than zero to be spontaneous, right? So in terms of doing this, let's go ahead and calculate that out. Delta G here is 2 times 96,500 times 2.91. That is negative. 5, 561,630. Wow. How many sig figs should I have here? Probably three. Three for the um, cell potential because Faraday's constant is not going to count. Two moles is not going to count. So three significant figures. Let's uh, go ahead and put this in uh, kilojoules. You could either put, uh, you could do one of two things here, right? You can either put negative 5.62 um, times 10 to the, what is that, the fifth? Joules. Oh, you can't see the joules, but that's okay. Or you could put negative 562 kilojoules, right? Because joules are um, smaller units than kilojoules are. Awesome, pretty spontaneous reaction. That's pretty cool. And we could also actually calculate from delta G now, we could calculate K, right? We know that delta G naught equals negative RT natural log of KEQ. This is, KEQ is just labeling the equilibrium constant, right? So if we want to rearrange this and solve it for KEQ, we would divide both sides by negative RT and then get rid of the natural log. The way I do that is with E, so KEQ is going to equal E to the negative delta G naught over RT. Woo! That's fun. Maybe not for everyone, but it's fun for me. All right, and I'm going to put make sure, because I'm using R, R here, let's see if I can write R. You guys can't see that R. R here is going to be the same R we've been using anytime we have energy units, right? So R is equal to 8.314 joules per mole K. Because my R is in joules, my delta G has to be in joules as well. So I have 561, 630. That's the whole answer I got originally instead of 5.62 times 10 to the fifth. Uh, that's joules per mole. Um, divided by, we're going to make big, big moments here, divided by uh, guys, can you guys see this? 8.314 times, we're going to assume this is at, uh, for my temperature, 298K. Ooh. Just barely fit that in. <laughs> it's close. 298K is what we got here. And so then I'm going to calculate this out. KEQ, which you guys can't see. Let me put it, um, let me put the answer right here where you guys can see. All right, so I'm going to take this number, which was negative, by the way. Woo! Remember the negative right there. All right, negative 561,630 divided by 8.314 and then divided by 298 because I'm not using parentheses for the 8.314 and 298. That gives me negative 226.686, basically. And I'm going to e take e to the negative of that. e to the negative of my answer. And I got, wow, I got a big number. <laughs> Which, if it's this spontaneous, you would expect. I got a number like 2.81 times 10 to the 98th. <laughs> wow. That is way bigger than one, folks, which means it's super duper spontaneous. Sometimes when you get times 10 to the 98th or something that's really big like this, sometimes your calculator is going to give you an error.
So the way you would write this, if you could not, if you got an error on your calculator, what I would expect you to do on a test is I would expect you to have a backup plan. Your backup plan would be putting simply KEQ, if this is if you get an error, KEQ equals E to the positive of the original number, which was 226 or 227. Right? And I would take that as well if you had an error on your calculator. Otherwise, I would expect the bottom number. Okay. And that finishes up the calculations for the battery. Next time, we'll do the actual construction of the cell for this exact reaction.